Hey everybody, Tim here. In this screencast, we are going to build this. See that? In GeoGebra's 3D calculator. And if you are a math teacher and you teach upper elementary students, middle school, high school, doesn't matter, your students can build this in this app. It's actually quite easy to do. And in fact, I um, just want to just mention this one thing before I begin quickly. You know, we teach, uh, we work with surface area and volume all the way in like fifth, sixth grade, right? Three dimensions. And then after that, it's like we don't bother talking 3D until they're in calculus, you know, in um, like a calculus two course where they're finding a volume of a solid revolution. And so somewhere between algebra, pre-algebra, all the way up through pre-calc, there's not a lot of 3D exploration in mathematics. And it's like, well, if we live in a 3D world, why aren't we actually exploring and modeling more in 3D within our various Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Calc curricula? I'm saying that it can be done. And in this app here, GeoGebra 3D Calculator, it's an amazing place, very intuitive and easy to use. And I'm going to show you how we can build this right here and right now. So let's rock and roll. Now, again, I'm just going to go rather quickly um, because just for this to res respect your time. But uh, the thing is, when I engage students, I like to just ask lots of questions and have them think and have them play. But again, if you just think here, like there's my, there's my solid I want to build a model of in here, right? How am I going to actually do that? Well, the thing is position. Position is everything, at least to start. Where do, you want to, where do you want to put the cylinder? Where do you want to put this cone? And many students will say, well, it kind of makes sense. We like to maximize the number of times we use zero as a vertex. So why don't we put zero, 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 right? X, Y, Z. The red axis is X, green Y, the blue axis is your Z axis. So R, G, B, red, green, R, G, B, X, Y, Z, kind of goes like that. All right, so there you go. Now let's suppose that this, uh, by the way, uh, the radius, the radii of both are the same. The height of both are the same. And for each one, the height is actually double the radius. This set was made with that ratio. Okay, so that makes our work even a lot easier. So therefore, let's just pretend we measured it, let's suppose it's three units, right? So I'll type, type three, zero, zero, right? And so we can start to think and say, ah, you know what? I mean, I want a circle here, right? To make a circle with center A that passes through B. We can do that. I could use a circle tool, but I like to type a lot faster. But um, center to A going through B. Now, you would think that it would plot the circle right away on that gray plane, but hold on a second. Why does GeoGebra say... I don't know what you're talking about here. Well, again, we're not in two space. We're not in two dimensions anymore. We are in three. The and there's actually infinitely many circles you could draw that have center A that pass through B. So GeoGebra's like, dude, which one do you want? Well, we have to we have to specify either one of two things. We have to indicate a plane that uh, contains the circle. That's this gray plane right here. Or an easier way would be to specify an axis that is perpendicular to the circle. So you see here, the z-axis will serve as like the axis of the circle. So I'm just going to type in z-axis just like that, and look at that. It appears like so. Okay, so at least we got that base circle down. Now let's work our way up. Now, if you think about it, there's another circle right, there's another circle right here, isn't there? Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of like to... Uh, I like to use a lot of transformational geometry. I like to translate. Fat, ooh, an object by a vector. Yeah. What's that object's name? That object's name is C. Right? And the vector, now if you're if you're doing transformational geometry, this would be a great way to go. If you're not, I'll show you yet another way. So just don't 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 uh, close out yet. But the vector would be what? 0 0. Now we said the height was double the radius. So 6. See what I mean? And there we go. Okay, now let me hide that for a second. What if we didn't? What if we actually didn't know that? What if what if I, my students don't know about translations, Tim? That's a great question. Well, you know what we could do? If all we're focusing on is point plotting, we could actually have our students plot other points. How about um, oh yeah, zero zero six? Isn't that the center of that top circle right there? Right? And couldn't we also perhaps plot? Um, ooh, now we have to go over to the right. See the x-axis is like magic coming out this way. The y-axis is going straight through there, and the z-axis is just shooting straight up through the center through the apex of the cone there. You see that with me? So right here, why not actually put it, well, it's got to be the same x, same y, but that z there, but that would be 3. You see how this, this is a great intuitive app for have, to have kids work with their spatial reasoning skills as well. Check it out. 306, boom. And let's, let's have GeoGebra make a circle now 
with center C going through D. Uh, isn't that axis still the same Z axis? There you go. So you see, here we have a transformational geometry approach that we just use right here. You know what? If your students study translations in two, in two dimensions, why can't they do it in three? They can. They just, vectors have three components instead of two. That's not a lot to ask, is it? And so, or we could just focus on the point plotting and the circle making, like so. All right, now let's actually hold this. I'm going to hold the shift key down and press it again. I'm going to move this down a bit here. There we go. I just got to be able to see it there. Now, I need to actually, I want to plot the apex of the cone. Just right here, like so. Let's actually plot the apex. Now, if you, I'll zoom out with my mouse here. Okay, now the same height, so that'd be what, 0, 0, 12? Right? See, I, we could see the formation coming on here. Just plotted that point right there. Okay? And now, here's where, here's, where, here's where the magic happens. You see, what's my goal here? I want my kids to think spatially. We're using coordinates here to actually plot points, and from, that, from those coordinates, we are going to create now a surface of revolution from that. And you think, oh my gosh, that's so hard. No, 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 it's actually so easy because here's what you do. You ready? Um, let's actually go to the tools right here. Show more. Let me uh, back here. Let me rewind because I went that fast. Here's the calculator. Here's the tools right here. Tools. There's lots of them. Go to more. And if you look right here, you will see um, there is a segment tool right where it says lines and polygons. So let's touch it. Segment. What we want to do is make a segment going from E to D, right there, and then D to B, like so. You can see that we, uh, oops, I think I might have made, hang on a sec, yeah, I made two points accidentally. Hang on, let me undo that. You got to touch, uh, touch it carefully. I apologize. That, that's good. But now we need to make a segment now from point D to B. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to spin those things to make the surface. And here's how we're going to do it. I'll show you right here, right now. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a slider called spin, S-P-I-N, equals 1. So many of you that have used uh, math apps, you know, you're very, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept of a slider. It's a variable, a parameter that can change as you slide. But let's click here. I want to let the lower bound be go there. I'm going to let the lower bound be 0 degrees, 0 DEG. Upper bound, 360 DEG. From 0 degrees, we got to spin 360 degrees. And I'm going to increment smooth by 1 DEG. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, yes, I know GeoGebra defaults to radians, but who cares? That doesn't matter. Even upper elementary and middle school, not a big deal. Okay? So let's go back and say, well, what do you mean? Well, check this out. If now what I do I could even tell GeoGebra a couple things. Look at this. Look at this right here. This segment, notice, is called F. The segment ED. So if I tell GeoGebra, hey, I want you to rotate, please, F, uh, that many degrees. About. Hold on a second. What's the what's the axis of revolution? Oh, the Z axis. Yes, Z axis. And as I spin, look at that. It'll actually start forming that there. See. And now let's actually do the same thing with uh, this one. What's this one called? G. So I'm going to say rotate G S spin by the angle spin about the Z axis. Enter. And lo and behold, there you go. Pretty cool, right? Now, time to fill it up. This is my favorite command of all time in the app right here. It's the surface command. So again, remember, this is called F. This is called G. So look at this. You want, here's what I want GeoGebra to do. I want to tell it to, you know what? I want you to make me a surface of revolution now, please. By taking F, I want you to spin it now that many degrees about the Z axis. And again, all that to your upper elementary, middle school is going to be meaningless. They don't need that. But look, you know, but what, they're, what they are going to get out of it is this. Check it out. Ooh, isn't that cool? Very nice, right? Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing there. Uh, we got that going on there. And now how do I make the cylinder down here? Well, I could just simply go right here and just say surface what? What's that vertical segment called? G? Surface uh, spin G, that many degrees, about the Z axis. And voila, there you go. That's it right there. And now I'm going to hold the shift key down, highlight both of them. I'm going to right click, go to settings. 
because and if I go to style I want to get rid of those lines I don't like those lines so much they uh, drive me crazy but that's okay so each is her own right I can see what I'm doing here but now let's close that out and see what it looks like pretty cool huh and you could change the color you could do lots of sorts of things like that but again that doesn't matter but see there it is and now this is the part that we've all waited for where does augmented reality pedagogically come into play right here and right now we made our model we built it from scratch in GeoGebra's 3d calculator on our computer or our Chromebook right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save it and I'm gonna open it right here on the tablet and project it in augmented reality to see how well my model fits my virtual model fits this real model right here so let's take the time to do that right here right now I'm gonna show you how to do it yet again so what I do is go here you need a GeoGebra account of course to save right let's go to file save and I'm going to call it, say, um, I don't know, cylinder and cone. Now, you could have one, of, you can make it public, share with link, or private. I like to make it share with link for now. Again, you can't find it publicly, but only those to whom I give the URL will get it. Not a big deal. Just can't be private, though, because only you could see it. But let's see. It says saving. Save successfully. Now, here's what you have to do. I learned this the hard way. You actually have to, I'll give it a talk once, so you, have, you actually have to close this out altogether. It's now closed. We go back to GeoGebra's homepage right here. Okay, go to your profile. You go to your profile page, it'll be the first item you see right there. And what you need to steal from that, I don't care so much about what's here, I need this right here. That's the seven digit uh, URL really for that particular resource. I'm just going to copy it and show you here. I'm going to put it in a doc. Copy. So we could all see it better. And let me go to docs.google.com. Going to go to blank. And we're going to go right here to paste it. Well, did it once too many times. There we go. And I'll make it bigger so you can see it. So what I want you to do now is open up GeoGebra's 3D graphic calculator uh, on your um, your i your a tablet or you're on your phone or something like that so here we go there we are so i'm gonna go to the 3d calculator open it up there it is All right and now i go to the menu up here upper left go to search on an android it'll say open i think you go to search and you type that in right there r r g it is case sensitive by the way that is important to note six p w seven me, oh, I forgot I should have closed it out first because when you fade, you'll close it out. Let me do it one more time. My bad. So let's see. R R G. Six P. R R G six P. W seven. Hmm. Maybe I copied it wrong. Give me a second. Ah, I forgot the Z there. Oops. There should be a Z right there. Sorry. My faux pas. Watch this. See, one little character can do. <sighs> nice. There it is. Okay. In fact, I'm going to leave this resource always up there just as is. I, I didn't clean it up, but that's okay. I'm just doing this to illustrate here. Touch that. And there you go. This is the file just as I left it right on my computer. Right? It's the same file. But now, see, I like to create on my computer, but I like to open up and explore on my phone. Now, if I can zoom in, zoom out. And right now, I can press that AR button right there. And this is where your kids can actually, you know, record their own screencasts and send them to you. There's your performance-based assessment. Augmented reality thrives on two components, a flat surface and plenty of light, which we have both here. So tap tap there. There's our model. You can actually peek it. You want to, you want to swim in it? Go for it. You can dive right in. It's amazing, right? But now, let's put this to the test and see how well... The real fits over the virtual. I'm oh, sorry, the virtual fits over the real. Actually, I'm gonna if I touch settings here, I'm gonna hide the plane. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that gray plane so I can see better. But let's see. You ready for this? This is the moment we've all been waiting for, right? Here we go. Let me show it all. And voila. In fact, the better your model is built, the more it wants to just glue right on it. I'm actually backing away slowly. Well, actually, no, uh, it's a little shadowy, but let me get rid of the axes here. But you know what? There it is. Let's get up close even, too. Let's see. 
Again, possibilities here are absolutely endless. And all we, need, all we really needed, guys, was what? To plot the coordinates of E, D, and B. That's it. And we made two. We, we didn't even need to make the circles, actually, if you think about it, right? Wasn't even needed. So, but there is an example of, you know, real life, 3D, real world mathematical modeling, all right? We want our students to simply be able to think, you know, and this app is, you know, one of my favorites with respect to helping make that become an actual reality, you know, and then augmented reality lets you test. It's just so much fun. Um, but yeah, that's how, uh, that's how it's done. So um, a lot more coming this week with respect to um, lots of different things, some past tweets that uh, put out there. I'm showing you how I made them. Um, and I hope this fosters some ideas for you when working with your students to have them be creative to create some solids. I mean, all you need is a manipulatives box see, with a cone, a cylinder, this. Just make different, set, different sets of things. And that is a great exercise, in this case, of just simply plotting points, right? Um, I'll do another one where we talk about parametric equations. You can make that cylinder in a parametric sense. Very easy to do. Um, a lot more coming. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And uh, I wish you and your students much success. So.